Welcome everyone. This is Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 22nd of August, 2022. Thanks for being here. Topics I see on the agenda today include news, action items, upcoming elections, CDF topics, Jenkins.io website revert, and forums and community topics. Any other topics we need to put on the agenda? Nope. Oh, okay, well, great. Oh, go ahead, Gavin. Uh, there was a whole discussion on the Blue Ocean PR. Do we want to talk about that in that more? I don't know if that's a governance thing. Yeah, I think, it, well, I think it's worth discussing. We've got the right people here because Kevin's here, you're here, I'm here. At minimum, three people who are very involved in that pull request are here. So yeah, let the Blue Ocean disclaimer, uh, current status. And I've got some information from the past thing so let's carry that forward i should have copied it in already here we go and maybe what we call it is admonition so we use the same word every time okay any other topics that need to be added to the agenda no i think i'm good okay all right so news uh, the Jenkins 2.2.361.1 release is scheduled for September 7, 2022. It will require Java 11 or Java 17. No more Java 8 support. Uh, thanks to Chris Stern for volunteering as the release lead. The release checklist is open. Feel free to help out as this is Chris's first opportunity as a release lead. So. If you see something that looks a little funny, coach and encourage and help. Uh, grateful to Alex Brandis for his ongoing encouragement and for Tim Jacome. Uh, we'll do a CDF blog post in addition to a Jenkins blog post and the upgrade guide and the change log. Thanks to Kevin Martins and to Basel for their work on the upgrade guide, the change log, et cetera. Any questions or topics on that item? Okay, next then, action items. And here I have to acknowledge we've made some progress on the Linux Foundation funds transfer, but it's not yet available in the final mode on the site. The crowdfunding site should increase by about, I believe it was about another $1,500 or $1,600 after the Linux Foundation has transferred the funds into our account that we're given to us by Google Summer of Code 2021. So that we, we should expect to see further funds arrive there. Uh, and next action item was Jenkins Docs SIG mailing list. I've made no progress. And it'll likely be several weeks before I make progress on that. Contributor Summit blog pass posts no progress, but I've made pro progress on other blog posts. And the CDF Zoom account, this one, I think, Gavin, you had the right approach. Gavin suggested forwarding the, or including a private Google group in the, in the, the CDF mailing list, right? So that they would get all the notices of the, the, the token when it's updated. Yeah, that was, I mean, the other option is just to add each person individually to the CDF mail list, but I don't know how hard it is to do because I've never seen or heard of this mail list until this week. Right. And that's that's a Michelle Martineau. Uh, she's a CDF person, is the, the ultimately the one to decide, and I think she'll pick the hey, let's add one list and then let people subscribe and unsubscribe from that list. So I'll I'll see if I can't push that forward with Michelle. I think that's a good idea, Gavin. Let's just do it. Anything else on the CDF Zoom account question? Hi. Hi, Oleg. All right, so next topic, and I believe this was added by Gavin, was upcoming elections. 
Yeah, um, just was thinking about it. Um, I, we do the elections every December-ish, November, um, which is coming out pretty fast. Um, I believe specifically the board members who are up for election do not get involved in elections. So that's me and Evelina this year. So someone else has to be involved. And I figure the discussion happening sooner than later, so it's not a surprise, is a good plan, but. Mm. Yeah, good suggestion. So we've usually relied on the infrastructure officer. In that case, that would be Damien Duporto, but I don't know that he's aware that he's he's that, that well, usual uh, person. Uh, there are two parts. Firstly, is infrastructure part, I mean, this voting thing, et cetera, which can be duplicated from discourse if we stick to the process from the previous year. And to be honest, this is what I would advocate for, to stick uh, to the process at least once. Um, and yeah, then also the result of the logistics part, like announcements, waiting candidates, etc. It's usually a governing board member doing it. Well, I mean, last year, Olivia did everything, so. Well, so is this one where we ought to put it on I could probably be the one who takes on that announcement and betting candidates thing, uh, coordinate it with Damien, and if he needs to do the whole thing, or if I get overloaded. Maybe the... candidates is for the entire board. Ah, okay. At least how it's written in the governance document. Okay. Uh, yeah, so announcements, etc. whatever works. I can also participate in these things if uh, some help needed. But yeah, I still cannot commit on my band wife. I mean, mm -hmm. I will be definitely be able to send uh, emails, etc., because everything can be reused from previous years. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Good. So in terms of a timeline, Oleg, the the timeline then would be, usually it's a September uh, begin gathering candidates or gather candidates. Mm -hmm. October, uh, and, and that means announce and gather candidates. And then October, finalize candidates. And November, do the voting? Mm, yeah, something like that. With then the new officers, new new officers uh, effective early December. Yes. New officers and board members. Oh, all oh, right. Sorry. New, yeah. Thank you. New board members and officers. Yeah. Very good. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so we could probably shrink the timeline a bit. Uh, yeah, from what I've seen, uh, having a long uh, nomination period uh, haven't been uh, very successful in the past. Also, yeah, so we would still need uh, to confirm uh, the nominations with candidates to get uh, their statements. So for that one or two weeks would be a must. But I think that even if we started uh, on October 1st, we could have completed this process. Okay. But we can start early too. Sorry, Gavin, did you have some comment? No. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So how about let's put the mark to bring the topic to the Jenkins Infra meeting tomorrow? with uh, the infra team, or maybe maybe it's better to do an online discussion rather than put it in the meeting. So um, so we, we get the topic out there saying, hey, here's what we think we want to do. Let's propose a plan and So I'm oh like I'm with you on the let's use let's use discourse as the voting location again. 
Gavin, any reason that you have why we would not want to use the same voting technique we used last year? I don't think we used discourse for voting. I think we did discourse for the no, submitting. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. I'm sorry. You're right. Right. It was what we did is we used discourse to register to vote, and then we we used the the system from Cornell to do a to do the actual voting. No objections to me, though. I don't know if it misses. Well, yeah, no, the, I think the, the registrations part worked well. I don't think um, how we were organizing the list of candidates inside of discourse was well, but that's something whoever manages it can decide how to organize it. I think user facing it should still be the same process as last year. OK. And then voting through the through Condorcet. Dorset uh, voting system system at uh, Cornell University, and they were they they had to actually do some emergency recovery work for us last year, and seemed to do it all right. Very good. Anything else on the on the upcoming elections? No, but if they want to host outside of the university, I can probably help arrange it. Oh, okay, good. All right. If... Not necessarily part of the election, but just because I think I can. And the professor that, that runs the server interacted with us very positively through that. So uh, Gavin may be able to host, may have resource, uh, access to resources. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay. Anything else on upcoming elections? Okay. Next topic was CDF topics. Oleg, anything that you want to share there? Uh, well, uh, one thing, if you're curious, uh, there is a summary update uh, on uh, CDF TOC activities in the TOC channel on the CDF slug. Uh, so a few items uh, from there that might be of an interest. Uh, so yeah, I continue uh, on the STC chair for another year after the elections in uh, the TUC. Um, but yeah, as I said, uh, it will be my last term. So I have strong opinion that I shouldn't overstay more than two terms. So. Mm, yeah, uh, so by August 2023, I will step down um, one way or another from this post and uh, I will be um, organizing the handover. Uh, so uh, one impact on Jenkins uh, that uh, currently I represent, kind of represent a Jenkins in the CDF governing board. And I keep pushing for topics like project infrastructure. Sorry if the outcome is not visible because there is no outcome, but be sure I push it every time. And the next meeting is on Thursday. Um, but yeah, um, so I will be bringing up this topic there. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I've, yeah. oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, just go ahead because then there would be other topics. So I've I've reached out with first Pope to the CloudBees representative on the board. I just got back from vacation, so I'll check again to see if I've actually got an answer in my email. Okay, so a few other updates. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, Project Pierce was accepted to the CDF as incubating project. Is a distributed package delivery network. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't really. Uh, impact anything for Jenkins, including potentially upcoming changes in Artifactory plugin, uh, introducing this support too. I already talked to JFrog that it should be rather a separate plugin. Uh, well, you know the story about Artifactory plugin. Um, uh, yeah, also for pluggable artifact storage, etc. it might be some follow-ups. Um, another update, uh, there is a new project started, a CDF reference architecture. So this project was presented at the TUC meeting, at the best practices meetings. Uh, I can share a link to the slide deck. 
but uh, ultimately is attempt uh, to provide uh, a reference architecture for whomever deploys uh, application delivery flows, including uh, CI or CD. And uh, in theory, uh, this uh, reference architecture should somehow uh, find balance between all CDF member projects and other projects in the ecosystem. I have no idea how it would particularly happen. Of course, we do have some interest that uh, Jenkins is listed there, uh, the recommended solution, let's see, for CI. I'm not 100% sure about CD, but uh, it's uh, to be determined. I will share the link. So if someone is interested in these high level uh, recommendations and white papers, this is a project uh, you might uh, uh, join. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure how much. Uh, this would be for the community. Uh, so um, a few other updates. So the project called Directive uh, will likely apply uh, for the CDF membership. So Directive is a cloud native uh, uh, pipeline engine that is uh, based on cloud events for receiving and sending events, but otherwise it's, let's say, cloud native pipeline engine uh, that uh, is super flexible in theory, and they actually want to introduce it uh, in the CDF. So, like, did I get the, the name of that project correctly? Interactive? Uh, directive. Uh, just directive. Oh, thank you. Okay, so like. Well, uh, you all know uh, it's like this because it's Kubernetes, so every city can. Uh, but yeah, otherwise it's like that. Um, yeah, so this uh, might have some overlap with Jenkins. Well, I uh, said many times that the uh, Jenkins pipeline engine should be pluggable. Um, it's probably another uh, use case, uh, well, another implementation possibility along with Tecton, which is already a part of the CDF. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, CDF is getting more pipeline engines. There are also some discussions about other things, for example, about Dagger uh, potential interoperability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, most likely this topic will keep appearing. Obviously, it doesn't seem that we have uh, any community bandwidth to make the pipeline engine uh, pluggable at the moment. I'm not sure whether we have much of demand for that. Um, yeah. Don't kill the messenger. Right, right. So Jenkins' pluggable pipeline engine uh, is not actively developed. Yeah, I looked uh, into that uh, several years ago when I was uh, working on um, a multi tenant Jenkins, even easy not. And Got it. The, our main problem is that basically Jenkins pipeline uh, has completely separate implementation of, of the engine and not integrated in the Jenkins core. Mm -hmm. So, long story short, yeah, it will require some uh, major leak hacking. Um, yeah. What else about CDF? Basically, nothing I would say. Um, so one thing to keep in mind that now we have a treasurer, uh, David Lai. So David could potentially help us with all the stories like GS funding, etc. Once he uh, uh, does the takeover. Actually, I'm not sure whether. I'll money landed in lfx crowdfunding but if so it's good yeah and when i checked earlier uh, just a few minutes ago the funny hadn't the funds had not yet arrived yeah. i was glad to see tara or cara de Lamarck and Alyssa both saying that there was progress but finally funds i don't think have yet arrived yeah it will require some additional pump plumbing okay well, that's it for me. All right. Thanks. Any questions to Oleg on CDF topics?
Okay, next topic then was the Blue Ocean Admonition Current Stuff. My fingers, Blue Ocean Admonition Current Status. So we've added an, a statement of the current state of Blue Ocean to a number of different pages. We had several additions. We had one asking Basel to add the admonition to the plugin documentation. I think that's done, right, Basel? I've seen it and I've seen a website as well as the README on GitHub when you find the uh, repository. Great. All right, so then we had one more, which was add the admonition to the Docker Hub entry for the Blue Ocean container. And that one is, the, I think, the most, the most needed because that container gets much less attention than any other, than any of the officially maintained containers. Uh, unfortunately, that one I've not done yet, and I don't think anyone else has, has made any progress on it. Um, I've been meaning to bring up with the, excuse me, the platform team. Um, there is an issue with that one specifically, and then in Docker in general, where people are installing plugins, expecting it to take effect the next time they launch a new image, and it doesn't, because plugins are installed to the ref directory and not the actual plugin directory. And Jenkins on startup doesn't override your plugins directory with anything in ref. It only only copies new files over, or sorry, uh, non non-existent files. So there's been a couple like that's what really was the big issue with the Blue Ocean upgrade and all the issues in the form. And people were like, I downloaded a new image and it still broke. You're like, Yep, that'll that'll happen. Okay, so uh, that's further motivation then to get people off the. Now, is the I, is the standard container think... any different? Well, the standard container doesn't contain plugins or very few. Uh, they all get installed on startup, and that's it. Um, the problem is that it's a it's a limitation with the design and not the block the Blue Ocean plugin or the Blue Ocean image specifically. Right. So there's been a couple other people who have posted things like I've been I've been, been creating a Docker image with these plugins in the past, but they don't update when I update the plugin. You're like, yeah, you got to delete your plugin directory and let it copy the new files over again on top of them. Because Jenkins home is, a, is outside of the Docker container. I see. OK. So I don't know what the right solution to this is, um, but it is related to this and something that we should think about further. Yeah, so it may need changes in the official Jenkins container as it, well. It may need changes in core because I think copying ref to Jenkins home is a core thing and I don't know if we Okay. Would we would we prioritize that of because I don't see a strong, I don't know what the original motivation was to have a separate blue ocean image, but um, I think if, the image was for documentation. Was to, if that motivation was to increase adoption, I think it's already served its purpose. Yeah. No, I'm pretty yeah. sure the container was just to be like, hey, one one command will get you started in blue ocean. Right. Um, and And we dropped its use in documentation 12 or 18 months ago. So there's 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 not really a, a compelling reason to, to to do anything except deprecate the blue, blue ocean container. But I think what Gavin was describing may also be an issue in the actual controller container that we officially support as well. Like like for me, I create my own Jenkins container with all the plugins pre-installed, so that I can roll back if I need to. Mm -hmm. But I specifically have Helm delete because there's a flag in the Helm container or Helm config that deletes the plugin directory on startup right so that's how i get around it but it's a really ugly hack and people who are not using helm like using openshift or just using docker by themselves don't have that option i think that would be i think i've run into this issue in the past as well and i've done the same exact workaround by deleting the plugin directory on startup um so i don't know if there's a ticket file for that already but that might be a good ticket to uh to have in the either in the Docker packaging um, bug tracker or the core bug tracker. Because I, I think right. I, I'm familiar with this problem. I remember having to delete that directory before. It's yeah, I, 
I have not brought it up specifically, so I don't know if there's a ticket, but it's been on my list for a while too. And this discussion with Blue Ocean reminded me to, that I should bring it up. For Blue Ocean specifically, you know, we could uh, um, we could just print a warning saying that this image is deprecated, and then sleep for two minutes. Right, that's you pretty could. annoying. Right, that would that would wake people up if they haven't if they um, haven't noticed. I doubt it. <laughs> Honestly, I think, especially with Kubernetes, you just hit deploy, you wait till it's up and you're good to go. You don't really wait. You don't go, oh, it's two minutes slower today than it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but but finding a way, I, I think we do need to find a way to communicate to users that they're running a deprecated container. Yeah. I don't know what that method is, but I think we owe it to them. It may, might be an administrative monitor that says, yeah. look, your container name is something we think you should not be using anymore. <laughs> Something Even if like it's, it's something like you write a file to the disk, the min, the min monitor checks that file and right. goes, cool, you're running an image that's based on one that we don't support. Yeah, that could be done as well. Um, yeah. Wouldn't be pretty, but it would get the message across. That's what matters. Yeah, yep. and it would catch anyone who's extending Blue Ocean, where you, if you're looking at the image, you wouldn't catch that. So, But that's a platform SIG thing, not a governance thing. Yes, right. So topic for platform sake. Okay. I'm very good at volunteering other people. At understanding scope. Anything else on Blue Ocean admonition current status? Okay, yeah. next topic then was we had a, a Jenkins.io uh, website layout look and feel improvement pull request that came in from a new contributor. Um, after three or four of us had reviewed it, we decided, hey, let's merge it. Uh, then we detected several cases where, oh, it had regressed something, decided let's let's revert it. So we've reverted. It. Now we're hoping that that contributor will continue. He's expressed interest in bringing the, uh, the change in as a series of smaller pull requests. I haven't seen any of those smaller pull requests yet. I'm hoping that the contributor is just busy with the university and we'll see them. If not, the concepts are there and others could pick up and try those small improvements one step at a time. Did something recently change with RSS feed? Uh, oh, I don't, I don't know. Good because question. Because I just got notice. Maybe they just got published, but I just got a notice yesterday. I have a um, RSS thing for the Jenkins thing. And essentially mm -hmm. I got one, two, three, four, five, six notifications of new posts yesterday for a week or two worth of blog posts. So I'm wondering if we accidentally broke something and fixed it, or it's just been in my script maybe or something. I don't know. Yeah, I so I fixed a bug in the RSS feed that Aha. had the wrong uh, URL. So that if your RSS reader uses the canonical URL that the feed provides. That might be a cause. It might be. So, yeah, it's not my script, so I don't know. Uh, so I think the individual entry URLs didn't change, but the canonical URL of the entire thing changed because it was still pointing to a kuskit.org test site that hasn't existed in a decade. And if some sort of ID is computed using that, it's nice. it's understandable. Nice. Also, welcome, Daniel. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on the Jenkins.io website revert before we continue to next topic? So I have a question about the review criteria for some projects in the uh, for some parts of the project it seems to me that for certain kinds of contributions reviewers would approve the contribution as well as its exact opposite like if someone moves something from right to left Thanks for the contribution. That's great. Someone moves something from the left to the right. Thanks for the contribution. That's great. Is this just a cynical 
uh, idea that I'm having, or would you say that's actually something that that you can see happening? Like, so do I... we do we actually look at the men? prove the exact opposite so in this particular case i think the color scheme was changed from sort of a grayish thing to orange or something and i was wondering about if a year down the line someone showed up and said well this looks terrible we're switching from orange to gray would that be approved as well a good question i in terms of my ability to review those kind of style changes i rely on others taste and sense and if they say they they like it i think i'm willing to say yes i like it as well so but would that prevent me from switching back in the future probably not so i think your your answer at least speaking specifically about mark weight i can't speak for anybody else but for me there are definitely times when I would either approve a contribution or approve the exact opposite, because I don't worry about those two things at that level. So I think that's what you're saying, right, Daniel, is merit of a change critically enough to not reject, to then reject if it were the exact opposite. Right. Uh, I think usually you can go one way, going from something to better but if you go from something to something but different that seems like a waste of time of everyone involved mm -hmm. right agreed yeah now and in this case i don't think it was actually a going back to the opposite but i assume that your question was asking that as a thought experiment as a hey right. is this indicating we need to be more careful in in our reviews of things to Jenkins.io. So in this case, I think uh, I can answer the question with yes, should be more careful because in this case, the font was changed from a very deliberate recent choice to use the platform default font and the pull request went to Arial and feedback in the PR said we don't want Arial and then uh, it was first removed and added back again and then merged. But I'm thinking about um, more generally, if, I don't know, if a border is made rounder in the corners and then another pull request shows up and says, we don't want corners that are quite that rounded. One of the two pull requests should not be merged, would be uh, my position here. And I, I now wonder whether we are, in general, prepared to provide such feedback. Well, I always try to look for a justification and to apply the needs justification label if there isn't one present. You know, so my, my criteria for merge for core is not only is this not introducing your aggression? That's that's obviously a criterion. But on top of that, I'm always trying to ask myself, what problem are we trying to solve? And is this the desired solution for that problem? In, in many cases, it's stated explicitly. Sometimes it's only implicit. And in that case, it's harder to review the change because it um, requires the reviewer to take on the burden of filling in the implicit justification in their mind. And you know, sometimes that could be very easy for the reviewer if they're very familiar with that area of the code. Um, if they're not familiar with it and the justification is implicit, it can be very challenging. And in, in such cases, it's a fine line, but sometimes I will avoid reviewing these types of changes. In other, in other cases, I'll step in but ask for a more explicit justification and i found that most people are willing to uh, provide a justification if asked for it um it's it doesn't it's not it's not in my experience 
a request that's too too much to ask. Uh, it's not like asking people to uh, implement you know, a very large amount of um, monotonous work or something. It's just more like explain the problem you're trying to solve and how the solution solves that problem. And and I think that's really the only the only uh, the best the best solution to this problem. Um, and that that can really change the conversation because sometimes you know I ask that question and there's the answer I get is oh I didn't realize that the problem was more complicated than what I had originally thought or oh now that now that we phrase it that way there's maybe multiple solutions to this problem and this might not be the solution we choose so just starting with the question what problem are we trying to solve in other words what's the justification for this um, in my experience that's the best answer and I, I would never be afraid to ask that question as a reviewer or a maintainer good guidance so for those of us who are on who are doing reviews of content for jenkins.io particularly structural changes it's a good good place to ask for justification good hint thanks yeah so daniel in this particular case do you think that would have would have helped us get clarity i think here we had a large change that came in as a single change instead of a series of smaller steps and the proposal for the, the re, redo of it is let's do it as a series of small steps where we can evaluate each step. If that makes sense for the specific change, it's been a while already, so I don't know the exact details, but sometimes you are in the situation where each, where each part on its own doesn't quite make sense and you need all of the parts together for it to really make sense, right? Um, but in general, I mean, it's a general guideline in the project and I think elsewhere as well to have small-ish self-contained changes. And if then, you know, there's one change for the color scheme and we can ask why. And if the answer is, well, I like orange a lot, and maybe that's not quite the justification we we want for changes of this kind. I, I can see this also being um, um, a case of solution. So, you know, someone coming in saying this change improves my life, so we should merge it. And you're like, we're like, yeah, but you know, you haven't really act, uh, interacted with anyone outside of your narrow company or person you don't know how it affects you know so you know because i've been thinking about how many how many times how many people we've had in the last couple of weeks join various channels saying i want to get involved with the jenkins community i know java how can i help and, you, and i'm like honestly you should be on the forums answering questions and seeing how people use the site before you're suggesting changes to the site to the thing and you know this would definitely take that effect or this would definitely help mitigate this issue where people are making changes because it affects only them and they think it's an improvement, but they don't really know how people are using it. But I've, I got, think a couple, I've got a couple of JIRA tickets that I could advertise to people if they're interested in working on Java code. Yeah, I mean, there's in the in the newcomers channel, there are a few people that joined recently and being, I want to I want to help out. Where can I help out? And Mark and I are like, here's the Derenek list, but we don't keep a, you know, I mean, we could have a, well, this is off topic on that one, but I mean, we could have a nice simple landing page for someone to be like, where can we help out? But I think the important thing is we want to make sure that people are engaged with the community as a whole and not just the one person that it helps, because that is what it's causing this problem. You know, one person wants this font, one person wants this other font, and it's back and forth. But I think there's also a lack of like community standards, and I don't necessarily mean a full standard guide, but like... I know we had some CSS issues there that in that big Jenkins IO thing that got reverted, but most of us didn't know that that existed in the first place because it, there's no test for it, which is hard to do. It's, I mean, no, no problem. Um, was it? Uh, it's it's hard to test CSS changes, but like from an automated point of view, but like there's no comments like saying, "Oh, this is specifically to handle a specific bug." I remember I got, I fixed one which I didn't realize was a specific bug to a different one. You know, so it's also very hard from a UI perspective to have that kind of long lasting documentation style guide. And with UI changes, you kind of just got to somewhat go for a gut instinct unless there's someone leading the whole thing. 
Okay. I mean, with, with Jenkins IO specifically, we are in the quite comfortable situation. And I think uh, it's all Gavin's fault that we have the test deployments, which, yeah, it is, yeah. which actually makes it pretty convenient to just have the live site and the test deployment up and, and compare them and see what changed. Um, obviously for more subtle changes that only affect the handful of pages or very specific pages, you might not uh, encounter them. But I think the test deployments go quite a long way to, to make it easy to understand the implications of something. And uh, especially if you don't know what a change does or why it exists, that's an important review feedback. Why, why is this even here? I occasionally ask this in core pull requests, changing the UI, because frankly, I have no clue what the 10 level nested less does or what it's for. And if usually the answer is good and sometimes the answer is, oh, right, that's a leftover from something that I can remove. So um, that's, I think, also important review feedback you can provide. I don't know what this is for. Why does this exist? Please put a comment there. And experienced developers in my, in my uh, that I've worked with have sometimes done self-reviews where they will uh, do a, a review of their own code where they explain the reasoning for every change that they've made. If that, if that isn't something that's obvious from the code itself or the comments. Um, and you know, perhaps not everyone would do that without being asked, but in my experience, that helps a lot, um, especially when you're making a change that has a lot of subtle implications. Um, a self-review is, is a great place to start, so. Thanks, okay. And also, I was just thinking about, I'm always thinking about the pre preview environments because I am incredibly lazy when it comes to reviewing actual code changes as opposed to just reviewing the code itself. Um, if we started to have standards in the in the PR template about what was changed, we could eventually have a script that actually generates screenshots too. Oh, oh, I see. So your idea was if if the PR template listed the pages or the URLs that are being changed, we could, hey, give me a screenshot of this side by side. I, I think no matter what, you should include a screenshot whenever you make a UI change in any way. Um, just because you want to highlight this is what I'm, I'm changing and that should take effect for core or website or anything else. But that being said, I, it would be interesting to see if we could uh, set up for some of these actually generate screenshots for like, hey, this page is affected, generate me a diff, you know? And there are CSS tools out there that'll do that. It says, okay, the UI layout of this page has changed. I'm going to show you a before and after screenshot. Hmm. Interesting. Good. Okay. Anything else with regard to the Jenkins.io website? Oh, I moved it to top level because I don't think it was Jenkins.io. Oh, oh, okay. Good. To the review criteria topic. Okay. okay. Next topic then forums and community topics. Gavin? Yeah, it's been quite a week of anything I wanted to really highlight. Uh, there were some comments on the last, uh, I think, Spring Boot RCE uh, post. I can't remember what the actual one was. Uh, Tim has closed it. I, I made a suggestion to close it. Tim has closed it, so no one else is going to comment being like, hey, what's the news on this new RCE, this new alert? Um, but it is something that we should be aware of that people are asking about. I don't know. I think honestly, I think in this case, we should have probably, maybe one of us should write a comment at the bottom, like for new new alerts, please contact security and then close the topic. So do we do we want that, thinking about, I do we do want that. to go that direction? I guess, I guess that's a, I'm not sure that the security team wants to be answering requests from people. What about this? Because when they when they detect an issue like on something like that, I believe they publish the statement if if, it's, if we're affected, right? 
So is there a, a drawer statement or a standard statement which would be if we're if we're affected, we'll say so. No, maybe that's too too, too yeah, creative. I know, right? But yeah. also, actually, that is exactly what the site says. Hold on. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, so, can response here might be nice too. <laughs> right. So, do not contact the Jenkins security team asking us for compliance documents, certifications, or to fill out a questionnaire. We will not respond to such queries. If we consider it necessary to provide a statement in response to incidents such as log for shell or spring shell, you will find a response in our blog, which is not exactly the situation, right? Because we have outdated dependencies and people are worried about them, but it does not rise to the level of everyone's losing their mind over this. So, At least yeah, in this case, it was spring for shell blog post which was a good blog post and then now people are like uh is jenkins vulnerable to the new spring framework vulnerability blah 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 and i'm we're like if i guess the, the standard response should be if we are we'll write a post about it but it also is like a lack of communication doesn't mean that we're not vulnerable so it's hard to say anything nice easy for that Yeah, it's difficult, right? So yeah. because we typically would not say, yep, we are vulnerable and you're just out of luck for the next two weeks. Uh, we would just provide a fix if it's important enough. Uh, I'm sure what the best uh, approach there would be. We get people who basically report vulnerabilities, if you will, in, in dependencies in uh, on the cert mailing list and in the security JIRA. And usually it's in the form of them dumping findings yeah. from the security scanner on us, which is quite unpleasant. Um, and we will typically tell them we're not affected. Uh, because we're not, and we usually already are aware of these issues. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. Um, how how frequent is this? So this has only happened once in the last two weeks. It was just a bunch of comments on the most recent spring fame framework uh, blog post. A so, bunch of comments. So many people asked this. Two. So not okay. many, many, but uh, Tim and I decided to close it a week ago. So only two got through. Um, we we're just like, honestly, this okay. is an old topic. It doesn't need to be rehashed. Okay. Uh, Got to go. Be right back. Sorry. Okay. Um, and then we can come back when Daniel, if Daniel comes back. Um. The next thing was, I was just pointing out, there's a, seems to be a higher than normal number of help requests about Jenkins API. I know Mark has dealt with a few and I've dealt with a few. I don't know what's changed. I think it just happens to be this time of the year or something, but it seems odd that we're getting a bunch of them all together. Maybe a blog post went out somewhere. Right. And I... I don't have an explanation for it either. Uh, I'm not overly surprised given random events. I assume it's, it will go also, quiet again. Apparently, we don't have any involvement with it. It's not in the Jenkins CI uh, GitHub space. It's not published by anyone. You know, So honestly, I'm just like, yeah, not our kind of not our problem. And, and, and I think that's a correct statement because it's published through the the Python packaging system, right? But it's also not in our repo. So we can't look, we don't yeah. like, there's no, and it's very hard to find the actual source code for it because all the links don't really go the right places. And 90% of the time I've, I've answered with, you should use configuration as code. And they go, well, we can't make changes. And I'm like, by the way, you should use configuration as code. They're like, okay, I tried configuration as code and it worked and solved this problem. I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm saying you should use configuration as code. Right, yeah. Like I said, not really concerned, just just kind of like one of those weird things that happened this week. Um, I don't mean to walk backwards because I know we're waiting for Daniel, but I had I did have another thought about the spring RCE if we wanted to wait until later to talk about that. 
Let's do yeah, the next it. ones and then cycle back because Daniel might be back then. So I did list three more topics that didn't get a conclusion that we may want to push as the governance board to do. I don't know anything really concrete about the the licensing and naming thing. I honestly think it's fine for us to give them uh, okay to use uh, and you know Jenkins development for IntelliJ or whatever like that. But someone should officially reply, and I don't really want it to be me. So, so this is one where I'm not sure how it how it works because it's this is not a company asking for a, a, a branding and naming thing. It's rather Dennis as a community community contributor has this uh, IntelliJ plugin that helps people who are doing development with Stapler. And Stapler is a common Jenkins component, mostly used in Jenkins. Yeah. So the, the question then was, hey, what should it be renamed? It used to be called Stapler Framework Support, or is currently called Stapler, Stapler Framework Support for IntelliJ. He was suggesting Jenkins Development Support. And I like, Gavin, your suggestion to follow the Linux Foundation guidelines. Ideas plugin for Jenkins Development seems like it's using... Linux Foundation naming rules very nicely. I would guess that IntelliJ has the same issue where they want their name to be last, not first. Oh, oh, right. My guess, you know, not not saying there's an actual published thing here, but it's one of those things where both companies don't want to use their the trademark as advertising. And this is not advertising. This is just making a statement. So I think we it should be fine. But because the trademark is now entirely Linux Foundation, I don't know who can sign off on it and or if we care yeah it might be an oleg question yeah i'm i'm not the expert oleg you're smiling and i'm curious if you've got an opinion on this one well for that i don't have an opinion uh, except the fact that it has been a, so this topic has been around for more than one year uh, so if dennis is interested in working on this let's just go ahead and that's it I believe you already reached consensus so that uh, Stepler is not uh, used uh, outside Jenkins and that we would like to rename it. I can uh, pull the data, but I was pretty sure that we had a consensus more than one year ago for it. So and we don't have to reach the Linux Foundation to say, hey, we want to approve this or anything, or just go like, cool, it's not a commercial thing, we're good. Yeah, we are perfectly good. I mean, uh, it's a part of the Jenkins project. Uh, we are eligible to use our trademark as uh, we wish. Okay. I mean, Mark, if, you want, if you're about to reply, that's good. Otherwise, I can try to do that later today. Okay. I'm happy with you doing that then. So governance board discussed it today and agreed that Jenkins development support. I, I would say as as it is a community project, Jenkins development support for IntelliJ is fine or is approved. Good, okay. I would go with his suggestion though for an IntelliJ. Uh, Jenkins development for IntelliJ? I think that's what the topic says. Okay, let me see, okay, so. Oh, just Jenkins developer support. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, sorry. Mm. Okay. So as noted, or do you want me to open up the issue just for safety's sake? Let's open the issue. Okay. I got four minutes before I have to go. So okay, I'm just trying so, to get through everything. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. So you're okay? Yep. Yeah. All right, thanks. Got it. Okay. Um, next the next topics. one is a prettier one, which uh, I don't think there's any objections to it, though it sounds like some people are thinking my commenting about that I don't like prettier specifically were having objections to it. I just don't like the tool prettier. I'm cool with the whole setup and prettier as an answer. Um, but either way, I think we should at one point just be like, yeah, sounds good. So it doesn't stale out because we have a lot of discussions that stale out really easily. Well, Tim has requested a review from Jenkins okay. for last week, and I approved it. 
no one else did. We have a rule of two approvals are necessary. Okay. So then again, today he requested a review from from the core PR reviewers group. Um, and that was just earlier today. So no one has had a chance to respond to that yet. Oh, good. Uh, from my perspective, all we need is a second approval to move forward with that. Um, and then speaking of uh, things that I'm afraid that might get lost is the forked repository thing. Um, I have some concerns about us having to do this again in the future because we haven't fixed the actual problem, but I'm totally in support. And I think we should move ahead with fixing all the legacy plugins. Great. Yeah. So Daniel had a concern about something I wasn't following very closely, but um, from, from what I could tell, that was the only blocker that was preventing us from moving forward. Um, I don't remember what, I don't remember what the issue was. Oh, I right. also remember that this, oh, it was on the actual PR or actually on the help desk thing, not the email list. I think basically, if I remember Daniel's concern, there was very, we were going to do a bulk action on a large number of of repositories. And I think he just wanted to make sure that we had checked each one in the list to see if that bulk action made sense before blindly. Basically, I think he was basically concerned about doing some sort of a dry run and checking the checking the list of actions before we go in and apply it to everything. Um, so you think there were at least one or two oddball cases that we wanted to maybe skip the bulk action misrepresenting but i think that was i don't think it was really a hard uh yeah. it was more like you know let's just double check this before we because this is an irreversible change yeah now that i'm seeing that i have to look, click on the help desk conversation i can see a lot of that discussion it's not in the mail list yeah so i think once once we double check everything we should be good to go <laughs> all right Cool. Anything else before we end? We're hard stop on time. Any other topics? All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, recording should be available in roughly 24 hours. We'll meet again in two weeks.